Hello and welcome to our daily Bible reading. I have been looking forward to this day. This is where we begin the book of Jeremiah. And for those who know me, you'll know this is a very, very special book to me. And I spent eight years preaching through every verse of this book systematically. And it was a 200 part series. Now, some people, in fact, I had people say, how on earth could you torture a church and go 200 parts through Jeremiah? Well, you can have a look at some of those on the Lagana CC uh, YouTube page and you'll see some of them. You, you make up your own mind whether it was torture or not. I enjoyed it and I hope that what we share now as we go through it, you'll also find enjoyable. We're continuing also through the Gospel of John looking at in that upper room uh, discourse that Christ had with his disciples just before he was crucified. Let's pray. Father, as we look now at Jeremiah, we look at a prophet who speaks eerily relevant messages. Eerily relevant because at that time, Lord, there is just so many similarities to what's happening in our day. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to see it. I pray, Lord, that you would give us ears to hear and a heart to respond. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Jeremiah. Let me tell you a little bit about Jeremiah. Uh, he is the second major prophet. And the only reason he's the second major prophet is his, his book's not as long as Isaiah's. And so uh, Jeremiah is going to give uh, a number of um, prophecies to uh, during the reign of, of some four kings, four different kings, and he will uh, re his prophecies will be repeated uh, to some extent. So he'll he'll give a prophecy in the earlier part of his book, and it will be repeated. What we're going to see as we go through these fifty two chapters of Jeremiah is that he initially sees things prophetically, and, that, and they, those people called seers, S-E-E-R, they saw visions and they described the visions. Then he, he grows up and he begins to grow spiritually and he hears the word of the Lord and he speaks what he hears. And we, we are given insights into Jeremiah. And this is why I think he is a, an extremely significant prophet. We can read through the book of Isaiah and at the end of it, learn a little bit about Isaiah, but not much. We will read through the book of Jeremiah and as much as we are encountering his prophecies, we're encountering him. And we will learn a lot about Jeremiah. We'll learn what he went through, the price he paid, because he prophesied at a time when Israel had completely turned its back on God. Now, the prophet Isaiah, we've just finished he was he was predicting he was prophesying that this would happen that the people of israel would turn their back on god and now jeremiah is in it he's in it he gets called at a very young age possibly 13 maybe 14 years of age and we see him beginning his his prophetic journey at a very very young age and he will meet a, a, a tragic end uh, which is not going to be described in the book because you know think it through if you meet a tragic end and you're writing a book you can't really describe that so we know from tradition that he was taken down into Egypt not by his own will and there he met a, a, he, he met his death um, so and he would be classified as a martyr essentially so let's have a look at this. This is Jeremiah chapter 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, one of the priests who were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the captivity of of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, 
Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over the nations, over nations and over kingdoms, to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see an almond branch. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. The word of the Lord came to me a second time, saying, What do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, Out of the north disaster shall be let loose upon all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all the tribes of the kingdoms of the north, declares the Lord, and they shall come, and every one shall set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, against all its walls all around, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will declare my judgments against them for all their evil in forsaking me. They have made offerings to other gods and worshipped the works of their own hands. But you, dress yourself for work, arise and say to them everything that I command you. Do not be dismayed by them, lest I dismay you before them. And I, behold, I make you this day a fortified city, an iron pillar and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, declares the Lord, to deliver you. Now, if you got that word, would that encourage you? It didn't encourage Jeremiah at all. It terrified him. And this is what we're going to see, I think, one of the most profound theological truths that we will see. What would life be like if God was with you always? Now, some people have this perception that that means everything will go well. What's more important, to have God with you when everything's going well or to have God with you when nothing is going well? I hope you, you realise you'd probably much prefer to have God with you when it seems like nothing is going well. And that's going to be Jeremiah's experience. And as a youth, as always with young people who don't see much past, you know, lunchtime tomorrow, there, there was an immediacy of his vision. But as he gets older, we will see he grows. He grows spiritually as well. This is Jeremiah chapter 2. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord, I remember the devotion of your youth, your love as a bride, how you followed me in the wilderness, in a land not sown, Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest. All who ate of it incurred guilt. Disaster came upon them, declares the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob and all the clans of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What wrong did your fathers find in me, that they went far from me and went after worthlessness and became worthless? They did not say, Where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt? who led us in the wilderness, in a land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that none passes through, where no man dwells. And I brought you into a plentiful land to enjoy its fruits and its good things. But when you came in, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priests did not say, Where is the Lord? Those who handle the law did not know me. The shepherds transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, I still contend with you, declares the Lord, and with your children's children I will contend. For cross to the coasts of Cyprus and sea, and send to Kedar and examine with care. See if there has been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit, 
Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked, be utterly desolate, declares the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Is Israel a slave? Is he a home-born servant? Why then has he become a prey? The lions have roared against him. They have roared loudly. They have made his land a waste. His cities are in ruins without inhabitant. Moreover, the men of Memphis and Tarpanes have shaved the crown of your head. Have you not brought this upon yourself by forsaking the Lord your God when he led you in the way? And now, what do you gain by going to Egypt to drink the waters of the Nile? Or what do you gain by going to Assyria to drink the waters of the Euphrates? Your evil will chastise you and your apostasy will reprove you. Know and see that it is evil and bitter for you to forsake the Lord your God. The fear of me is not in you, declares the Lord God of hosts. For long ago I broke your yoke and burst your bonds. But you said, I will not serve. Yes, on every high hill and on every green tree you bowed down like a whore. Yet I planted you a choice vine, holy of pure seed. How then have you turned degenerate and become a wild vine? Though you wash yourself with lye and use much soap, the stain of your guilt is still before me, declares the Lord God. How can you say, I am not unclean? I have not gone after Baals. Look at your way in the valley. Know what you have done. A restless young camel running here and there, a wild donkey used to the wilderness, in her heat sniffing the wind. Who can restrain her lust? None who seek her need weary themselves. In her month they will find her. Keep your feet from going unshod and your throat from thirst. But you said, it is hopeless, for I have loved foreigners and after them I will go. As a thief is shamed when caught, so the house of Israel shall be shamed. They, their kings, their officials, their priests and their prophets who say to a tree, you are my father. And to a stone, you gave me birth, for they have turned their back to me and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they say, Arise and save us. But where are your gods that you made for yourself? Let them arise, if they can save you in your time of trouble. For as many as your cities are your gods, O Judah. Why do you contend with me? You have all transgressed against me, declares the Lord. In vain... I struck, in vain have I struck your children. They took no correction. Your own sword devoured your prophets like a ravening lion. And you, O generation, behold the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness to Israel or a land of thick darkness? Why then do my people say, we are free, we will come no more to you? Can a virgin forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number how well you direct your course to seek love so that even to wicked women you have taught your ways also on your skirts is found the lifeblood of the guiltless poor you did not find them breaking in yet in spite of all these things you say i am innocent surely his anger has turned from me behold i will bring you to judgment for saying i have not sinned how much you go about changing your way you shall be put to shame by Egypt as you were put to shame by Assyria. From it too, you will come away with your hands on your head, for the Lord has rejected those in whom you trust, and you will not prosper by them. I hope you can hear the passion with which God is expressing his heartbrokenness at the betrayal of, of Israel. And a couple of things are really interesting here. Firstly, the, the northern kingdom known as Israel has been taken away into Assyria. They are no more. And now the southern kingdom bears the description, the, the people of Israel. And, and they were the people of Israel, but they're also known as Judah. But now the northern tribes have gone. They, they, they are 100 years earlier. They were taken away to Assyria and they're gone. And now the southern kingdom, Judah, at Judea has, has committed exactly the same errors, the same idolatry, the same sin as the northern kingdoms. And Jeremiah is expressing the heart of God, the heartache of God, calling them 
a prostitute, a harlot, one who is whored after those, those things that they call gods that are no gods at all. And you can hear the heartbrokenness of God in this. Well, we come to the upper room now. We're in the Gospel of John. This is Jesus and he's talking with his disciples just before he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. This is John chapter 15. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that does not bear fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all that I have heard from my father. I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, Therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth, who proceeds from the father, he will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. So in each chapter of this upper room discourse, the discourse, the, the thing that Christ is, is saying to his disciples, he mentions the Holy Spirit over and over and over. And we'll see particularly in the next chapter, he really mentions the Holy Spirit, the importance of being filled with the Spirit, the, the importance of walking with the Spirit, knowing the Spirit, hearing the Spirit's voice. It's the Word and Spirit that Christ is gifting to His disciples. And I pray that we might experience that as well. His Word, as we've been looking at it, and the Holy Spirit to make it real in our lives. Let's pray. Father, I pray that as we have spent time in Your Word, that now, Lord, it would be the, the Holy Spirit, the person, the presence, and the power of the Holy Spirit that would take the word and make it real in people's lives. Bless those who've joined with me in this daily Bible reading. Help them, oh God, today to apply and live out your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please give this a thumbs up. If you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. And you'll see me tomorrow for our next daily Bible reading.